Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. God's love is all-encompassing. If you hook up with Jesus Christ, you will win. Your life will turn around. He's a God of 360. He never fails. He's the God of love, and love never fails. Hi. Welcome once again as we continue on our journey, following him wherever he leads. And thank you for joining us. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that right now that you would open up the hearts and the minds of those who are watching right now, that you would bless them, that you would cause them to, to hear your word, Lord, and let it become real to them. And I ask in Jesus' name that you would make it real to each person. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I want to first start by wishing each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Jesus is truly the reason for the season. And we celebrate his birthday this time of year, and it's always a very colorful and beautiful time of year. But I want to draw your attention to what's going on in the world today. Because it's time to see that Jesus is coming back very soon. And it says in the Bible, it says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. The word perilous comes from the Greek word chale, chaleopus. And it's perhaps from through the idea of reducing the strength, I, difficult, i.e. dangerous, or by implication furious, fierce, perilous. Hard to do, to take, to approach. Hard to bear, troublesome, dangerous, harsh, fierce, savage. When you begin to look at the current events of today, and you look at the fact that since the year 2000, there's been over 160 mass shootings, not to count the terrorist attacks that have happened overseas and the people that have literally been slaughtered. For example, on December 10, 2015, um, the weather has been very unpredictable. There's been tornadoes, there's been earthquakes, there's been, for example, two deaths, many rescues in the Pacific Northwest storms. Torrential rains pummeled parts of the Pacific Northwest early Wednesday, causing mudslides and flooding roads, leaving two women dead in Oregon and sweeping seven people into a Washington River where they were rescued. Fifty killed in a on December 10th, 2015, 50 people were killed in an attack at Afghanistan's Kandahar Airport. Kabul, Afghanistan, 50 people have died in an attack at a market bazaar and a school near Kandahar Airport that began late Tuesday, Afghan officials have said. The number included 38 civilians, 10 Afghan National Army soldiers and two policemen. The Afghan Defense Ministry said in a statement Thursday, Another 35 people were wounded. Nine terrorists were killed, the ministry said, and one was wounded. December 2nd, 2015, San Bernardino, California. 14 people were killed and more than 20 wounded when two people opened fire at a holiday party at the Inland Regional Center, a service facility for people with disabilities and special needs. The suspects, Husband and wife, Saeed Rezwin Farouk and Tashfin Malik, were killed in a shootout with police after the rampage. Officials said they believed the attack was terrorism-related. 
October 1st, 2015, Roseburg, Oregon. A gunman opened fire at Umpqua Community College. Nine people were killed and seven more wounded. The suspected shooter, 26-year-old Chris Harper Mercer, killed himself after exchanging gunfire with the police. July 16th, 2015, Chattanooga, Tennessee. A gunman opened fire at a Navy and Marine recruiting center, killing four Marines. Three other people, including a recruiter and police officer, were injured. One of the injured men later died of his wounds. The suspect, identified as Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz, was shot and killed by police. Charleston, South Carolina. A white male opened fire during a prayer service at the historically significant Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, killing nine people, including Reverend Clementa Pink Pinckney, the church's pastor and a state senator. The alleged gunman, Dylan Storm, Roof 21, sat in a church for about an hour before beginning the rampage. He was caught about 200 miles away on June 18th. Mass shootings in the U.S. have tripled in recent years, the, Fed, the FBI says. 160 incidents occurred between 2000 and 2013, an average of 11.4 annually, 1,043 casualties, 486 were killed, and 557 were wounded. Perilous times. Dangerous times. Fierce. Savage. Road rage. Approximately 6.8 million crashes occur each year as a result of aggressive driving. Half of drivers claim they have been subject to aggressive driving behavior on the road and even responded with aggression of their own. Fierceness, violence. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 3 through 12, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. He talks about earthquakes in divers places. Year 2015, on February 16th, there was a 6.9 earthquake in Japan. On February 16th, the Colima volcano in Mexico's Jalisco state erupted. On February 18th, with a brilliant flash of light, a fireball pierced through the pre-dawn sky over Pittsburgh on Tuesday. Not one, not two, but three NASA cameras caught footage of the fiery streak which turned out to be a 200-foot, a two-foot wide, 500-pound meteor traveling at some 45,000 miles per hour. According to NASA's Meteor Watch Facebook account, the event comes nearly two years to the day that a much larger space rock exploded over the Russian town of Chelyabinsk, injuring more than 1,000 people. March 3, 2015, the Villarica volcano erupts near Pucan, Chile. Santiago, Chile, on April 22nd, the Calbuco volcano erupted. 
April 25th, at least 1,180 are dead after a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake rocked Nepal. 1,180 people are dead after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake rocked Nepal. May 3rd, 2015, a small earthquake has rattled the greater Los Angeles area, shaking buildings and waking residents. There were no media reports of injury or damage. The U.S. Geological Survey says an earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 3.9 hit at 4.07 a.m. Sunday. It was centered a mile northwest of View Park, Windsor Hills neighborhood, just north of the cities of Inglewood and Culver City. It was the second earthquake in less than a month along the Newport Inglewood Fault. A magnitude 3.5 quake hit the same area on April 12th. May 13th, a powerful 6.8 earthquake has struck off the eastern coast of Japan's Honshu Island, shaking the same area devastated by a quake and tsunami four years ago. USGS and Japan Meteorological Agency report no casualties or damage have yet been reported. On May 25th, there was another quake in Alaska's Fox Islands region, magnitude 4.8. It occurred some 96 kilometers southwest of Nikolsky Settlement in Umnekt Island and was 38 kilometers deep. May 29th, Ugashik, Alaska. 7.0 magnitude earthquake detected 64 miles southeast of town. On July 28th in Crescent, Oklahoma, two moderate earthquakes were reported in central Oklahoma Monday in less than a half an hour, 4.0 and 4.5. Santiago, Chile, a major earthquake just offshore rattled Chileans, killing five people and shaking the earth so strongly the tremor was felt in places across South America. Authorities worked into the early hours Thursday assessing damage in several coastal towns that saw flooding from small tsunami waves set off by the quake. The magnitude 8.3 quake hit off northern Chile on Wednesday night, causing buildings to sway in the capital of Santiago and prompting authorities to issue a tsunami warning for the Andean nation's entire Pacific coast. People sought safety in the streets of inland cities, while others along the shore took to their cars to get to higher ground. November 14, 2015. The U.S. Geological Survey is, re survey is reporting a seven magnitude has struck off southwest coast of Japan. Earthquakes in diverse places. He talked about persecutions. Eleven Christian missionaries were beheaded and crucified for their faith. ISIS right now, a terrorist organization, is on the loose, plotting and planning. You know, for example, just recently there were the attacks in Paris. These things Jesus spoke about and told us about and warned us about and told us to, to watch for, to know that the end is near, to know that his coming, his return, is very close. Perilous times, dangerous times, very dangerous times. People in the United States right now are arming themselves. They're getting permits to carry guns. Just recently, a mosque down in, in Texas was vandalized. These things are dangerous. And this is what the Bible talks about. He talks about, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. You go on Facebook all the time and, and all you see is selfies. A picture of me. You know, look at me. Everyone look at me. Everybody see who I am. And people cry out for new laws. Okay, let's take the guns away from everybody. 
And there's a big argument right now. There's a big debate over this issue. Let's take the guns away. What do you want? What are you trying to accomplish out of that? You're trying to accomplish peace and safety. Safety for your family and your children. You want to know that if your son or daughter goes off to school, they're going to be safe. That someone's not going to walk in and shoot them. And maybe shoot 10 or 11 of their classmates along with them. And people are afraid. And what does this lead to? It leads to people getting killed. The Lord doesn't want that for you. It's one thing you very much need to understand. The Lord does not want anyone to perish. And the Lord is the last one that wants to see you get killed and to see you die. See, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it's good to take the Bible and take what is said in the Bible and bring it forward and look at current events. There's a lot of argument. There's a lot of debate. You know, is this book true? Is this book real? Is, is what these people are telling me, is this all real? Or is it just another piece of fiction? The truth is, is yes, it's real. The truth is, is, is when you take it and you begin to compare the word, you begin to compare what is written to what is happening in the world, you can see that this is real and this was written for us to tell us of God's love and God's mercy, to warn us of the times to come, to keep us out of harm's way, and ultimately to keep us from perishing and going to hell. This is what the Lord wants for us, is to come to Him. He said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And He said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Well, during this Christmas season, it's time to realize that the birth of Jesus, Jesus was sent to fulfill the law, to show the, show the true character of God and the mercy of God, and to take our punishment for us and to pay the price for our sins. Jesus came so that we could be delivered from the evil that is to come. That's not to say there won't be hard times in your life. That's not to say there won't be trials and tribulations. That's not to say that you may, you know, that, that you may not get hurt somewhere along the way. You know, recently, just prior to Thanksgiving, my dad passed away. And it hurt. And it still hurts. But I had, I had the gift from God that on Father's Day in 2014, he prayed with me and received the Lord as his Savior. And I know that even though he sleeps down, that I will see him again, that he is alive and he is with Christ. And for many of those who have passed before me, who knew the Lord, And I can, I can rest in that and, and comfort in that. But I have to be honest with you. I'm selfish. I want him here. You know, earlier this year, and this is going to, earlier this year, my dog, I'd had my dog for 10 years. He was an outstanding hunting dog. 
He passed away. You know, and we had to, we had to put him to sleep because he was sick. And it was hard. And I missed that dog. Miss him with a passion because, you know, when God creates someone, he creates, he creates them unique. Each individual is unique to themselves. You know, you, you are a treasure. You are a one of a kind. You are a one of a kind. You have to, you have to think about that. And God created you in his image. And the Lord God does not want you to perish. He loves you. He loves you with a passion. In fact, there is no one who truly loves you as much as the Lord God does. He loved you so much that he gave Jesus. That he sent Jesus to die and pay the price. Because he knew, he knew that you could never do it on your own. He knew that I could never do it on my own. And he's so beautiful. You know, it's just like what we just read here. Look at the warnings. Look at the things that are laid out before you right now. I mean, this is evidence. This is truth. You know, recently I read an article where the Jewish, the Jewish people are saying the Messiah is coming soon. Okay. Now, they're looking for the Messiah to, to come walking on the earth. Okay. Jesus has already been here. He is the Messiah. Okay? But when they begin to say that, you have to see that, you know, it's another sign of the times. You know, in Matthew 24, it talks about, Jesus talked about uh, pestilences, famines. Many people die every year from starvation throughout the world. Pestilences, diseases, there's new diseases that are, that, that literally are very difficult. And some of them are even impossible to cure. The people are dying from and, and they're more and more. You look at the weather and how unpredictable it is. And this is on a worldwide scale. Every day or, or you, Every year we always hear about a mass earthquake or a mass tidal wave or something that where a lot of people have gotten killed or tornadoes that are, you know, just come in abundance or hurricanes. <coughs> They're talking about the largest hurricane <coughs> right now, um, typhoon that is going to hit Alaska and going to hit the Bering Sea. And it's only going to get worse. And people, you're going to look, for, you know, you're going to look for peace and safety. But the Bible says, when they say peace and safety, then shall sudden destruction come upon them. So we, let's take a look at, at current times. And what's happening currently in the world. And this is just brief. This is, this is just a small microcosm of what's going on. It's time for you to know and to come to Jesus. It's, there's no more time for you to put this off. You don't know when your time is going to come. But whether it is now or 50 years from now, it's going to seem like a minute has passed. It's going to seem like a minute has passed. I had my dad for 57 years and the moment that he was gone it seemed like it was a wisp in time. And I know there's several of you out there, you know, who have lost loved ones or children or whatever, you know, and it hurts. But the Lord wants you to know that he loves you and he's calling him to you, calling you to himself. He's drawing you to himself. 
Jesus, when he died on that cross, he cried out, it is finished. And then he went to hell in our place. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead, a real living person. And he showed himself to more than 500 people. Jesus defeated death. And it says the last enemy that shall be defeated is death. Now, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. It says, for with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth is confession. Confession is made unto salvation. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now is the time. Today is the day. Pray with me now and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Just pray this prayer with all your heart to God. Dear Father in heaven, I come before you right now, and I admit to you that I'm a sinner, and I ask that you forgive me for my sins. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, and I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. I'll live my life for you, and Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to thank you very much for joining us today on our journey as we follow him wherever he leads.